Baltimore's Memorial Stadium, now home of the Ravens, holds great memories for the Oakland Raiders, like Clarence Davis following Hall of Famers Gene Upshaw and Art Shell, and the ghost to the post, Ken Stabler to Dave Casper. Baltimore was ready for their new team, but coach Mike White's Raiders, with 22 new players, were equally ready. Rookie Lance Johnstone, 51, another classic Raider scouting gem, and 25, Dan Land, played with passion. With Jeff Hostetler out injured, Billy Joe Hobart started and quickly helped top draft choice Ricky Dudley record his first pro reception. Tim Brown scored his first of nine touchdowns in 1996. And number 82, Olympic gold medalist James Jett set up another for the silver and black. Brown's second score gave Oakland a seven-point lead. Cornerback Albert Lewis, 29, blitzed for one sack, but Oakland lost on the road by five points. Two weeks later, the Raiders opened at home in the completely renovated, expanded Oakland Coliseum against the playoff-bound Jacksonville Jaguars. Attacking defense again featured Albert Lewis, recording his 39th career interception. While number 99, Andre Bruce, had one of three Raider sacks. Healthy after missing the first two games, 13-year veteran Jeff Hostetler came out firing to wide receivers James Jett and number 80, Daryl Hobbs. Hostetler ignited the roar of the crowd with a touchdown to Tim Brown. Key blocks by 75, Pat Harlow, 76, Steve Wisniewski, and 82, James Jett allowed skillful second-year pro Napoleon Kaufman to explode for big gains against Jacksonville. With victory in their grasp, Raider defense dominated with aggressive play by 53 linebacker Rob Fredrickson, 94 Anthony Smith, and defensive tackle Jerry Ball. He can walk it in. Touchdown Raiders and Jerry Ball. Next, against San Diego, wide receiver Tim Brown and Raider aerial artistry struck quickly. En route to his sixth Pro Bowl, Brown caught 11 passes, including two for touchdowns, and young speedsters like James Jett, bound for a career-best 43 receptions in 96, contributed to a scoring spree. On defense, 56 Pat Swilling, 21 Darren Carrington, and 54 Greg Beekert battled the run, while Raider newcomer Larry Brown, Super Bowl 30 MVP, prevented a Charger score. Napoleon Kaufman followed big right tackle Lincoln Kennedy to break free for 77 yards on this run. Kaufman is a keystone in the Raiders' blueprint for greatness, as are 83 rookie tight end Ricky Dudley and 35 second year back Joe Aska. Dudley scored his first Raider TD and Aska thundered with both run and pass. Hobart came in late to rally these fighters in silver and black, firing touchdowns to Tim Brown and number 84, unheralded scouting department find, Kenny Shedd. But the explosive comeback finished six points short. In New York, protection by Wisniewski, Robbins, Gogan, Kennedy, and Rick Cunningham enabled Ricky Dudley and James Jett to make big plays.
Relentless coverage teams among pro football's best featured 88 Olanda Truitt, 87 Andrew Glover, Paul Butcher, Dan Lamb, Dan Turk, Kenny Shedd, Rob Holmberg, Tim Hall, Carl Kidd, and others. Defensively, 53 Rob Fredrickson, 91 Chester McLaughlin, 97 Russell Maryland, 54 Greg Beekert, and 51 Lance Johnstone grounded the Jets. Pro Bowl choice Terry McDaniel intercepted, and 37 James Trapp, 52 Mike Jones, Jerry Ball, Albert Lewis, and Larry Brown provided support. Joe Aska slashed for 136 yards, his best day yet. Breaking tackles, there he goes, goodbye, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, take it in, Joe. Ricky Dudley scored again as the Oakland Raiders totally dominated, winning 34-13. After triumph in the East, the Raiders returned west to California to host the Detroit Lions. Cornerback Larry Brown helped shut down Lions passing as the Raiders shut out high-scoring Detroit the first 40 minutes. Hostetler completed seven passes to 82 James Jett and four each to Brown, Hobbs, and Jerome Davison as the Raiders stormed to a 34-0 lead. Three wide receivers and the tight end Dudley up to the right side. Hostetler back to throw. Looks, pressure comes, flushed out, fires underneath. It's Coffin to the 10, Coffin to the 5. Lunging! Is he in? Yes! Touchdown, Raiders! Joe Aska and Raider mind and muscle controlled the Detroit defense, setting up an awesome play-action passing game. Davison, a wing back on the right side of the hip of Ricky Dudley. Play fake. They're going to throw for it. They're going for the bundle. James Jett has beaten his man. He's inside the 20. He's got it at the 5. Rolls into the end zone. Touchdown, Raiders! Unbelievable! Play fake. Back to throw. Hostetler with heat coming. Goes deep down the near side. Dudley wide open to the 40. He's to the 30. Cuts it back to the 20, and he'll take it the distance. Touchdown, Raiders! Again, we talk about the young players that have stepped up. Seeking victory in the tough AFC West, the Raiders traveled to San Diego for a Monday night showdown. Napoleon Kaufman followed Gogan, Kennedy, and Brown to score. Defensively, Chester McLaughlin demonstrated Pro Bowl prowess, roaming right and left to help limit the Chargers to 29 yards rushing and forcing a fumble that Pat Swilling alertly fielded. Terry McDaniel intercepted and followed Fredrickson and number 50 Mike Morton upfield. Talented Harvey Williams, number 22, displayed fine hands and quick feet. Tim Brown, en route to a Raider wide receiver record of 90 catches in one season, set up a field goal shot that sure handed Jeff Gossett number seven and Raider field goal percentage leader Cole Ford number five, converted into three points. Back home before the famed Raiderettes and 62,000 loyal fans in the recently expanded Oakland Coliseum, Raider defenders rose to the challenge. Safety Lorenzo Lynch's interception earned an early opportunity, and Hostetler's five-yard run behind 64 Robert Jenkins, Wisniewski, and Robbins converted turnover to touchdown against a vision-leading Denver. Then it was time for Bronco busting. Willing became the 14th NFL player credited with 100 sacks 
and Derek Fenner, number 34. Harvey Williams, 22, and Napoleon Kaufman led an offensive charge. Fenner worked through traffic to score on a pass, and Williams ran tough inside. Combining skill and effort, Tim Brown had eight catches, 126 yards, and a touchdown. But Oakland lost by one point, 22-21. With Fredrickson on injured reserve, Mike Morton started at linebacker in Seattle. Intimidating defense powered by McLaughlin, Bruce, Maryland, and Leroy Glover and Pat Swilling up front shut down Seattle passing. Swilling's sack and Bruce's recovery set up the first of two Jeff Hostetler touchdown passes. Hostetler with a long count on third, spot six, back to throw, sets, fires over to the near side, Jet has it at the 10, gets a block to the five, touchdown Raiders! He got a block from Tim Brown. Wide receiver over to the far side, short side of the field, Dudley goes in motion, play fake, back to throw, Hostetler fires, has a man, touchdown Raiders! Taking it in Rick Cunningham. The tackle eligible play, he had to announce in as an eligible receiver. Behind blocks by Ball, Wisniewski, Harlow, Dudley, and Robbins, Derek Fenner put Oakland ahead for good as intense Raider defense stood heroic at the finish. Russell Maryland's pressure and Terry McDaniel's coverage sealed a six-point win. The Oakland Coliseum has indeed been a house of pain for the Miami Dolphins. Whether through Ben Davidson driving Bob Greasy into the mud, or Ken Stabler's sea of hands pass to Clarence Davis to earn a championship shot. The embattled Raiders were primed to create more painful experiences for the visiting Dolphins. This afternoon we're at the Coliseum in Oakland as we go ready for the matchup between the Miami Dolphins and the Oakland Raiders. For the Star Kelsey Grammer sang the national anthem before another sellout Coliseum crowd. The Raiders controlled the war up front, and Harvey Williams and company rushed for 156 yards. Greg Beaker, 55 James Folston, and 74 Nolan Harrison helped hold Miami to just 34 yards rushing and pressured Dan Marino all afternoon. McLaughlin pursued, and 21 Darren Carrington came up to support. Versatile Tim Brown gained on the ground, following 295-pound Steve Wisniewski and 165-pound James Jett. Then, the AFC's number two pass catcher in 1996 found the end zone again. With the score... The Raider defense put the game away. Holds up, goes deep down the near side. Albert Lewis is there on the coverage. Does he come up with it? Yes, interception. Lewis. Here comes the blitz again. They pick it up. Marino fires over to the near side. Intercepted by McDaniel on the 25 to the 30. Comes over to the left side. Marino back to throw. Pressure coming up the gut. Slings it over the middle. Intercepted by Morton to the 45-40. He is tripped up going down to the 37 as they went over the middle. Oh Man, he just made my year. With past defenders Eddie Anderson, Larry Brown, and James Trapp injured, youngsters Carl Kidd, Perry Carter, and Lamar Lyons helped earn the win. It was the calm before the storm as the Raiders prepared for their 48th Monday night football appearance since 1970. Foul weather could not deter great Raider fans who streamed into the Coliseum with thousands using BART trains. Storm be damned, this was Monday night football. This was Oakland Raider Monday night football.
Soaking but smiling Raiderettes and Coliseum fans alike, plus a huge national television audience, saw Napoleon Kaufman, 1996 NFL leader in yards per carry, use blocks by Robbins, Gogan, Duncan, Fenner, and Brown for his third 100-yard game of the season. Tight end Andrew Glover capped the drive to put the aroused Raiders seven points up on Kansas City. Trapp, Carter, Anderson, and number 55, James Folston, made special plays on special teams. Linebackers Mike Morton, Greg Beekert, and Mike Jones stuffed chief runners, limiting them to under 100 yards. Chester McLaughlin, sack leader among AFC defensive tackles, captured quarterbacks and forced a crucial safety. The goal line, he spun around, he throws the ball out of the end zone. It should be a safety. It should be a safety. Grounding while in the end zone, safety on Gannon and the Kansas City Chiefs. This Monday night was payback time, and hostile Raider defenders were the bill collectors. Mike Jones' big hit and Darren Carrington's interception helped keep Kansas City scoreless till late in the game. Offensively, the Silver and Black took total control when protection by Lincoln Kennedy, Pat Harlow, and Steve Wisniewski earned time for Tim Brown to get open for a 34-yard touchdown play. Harvey Williams, already 10th among all-time Raider rushers, contributed to the team's 170-yard ground total. And Jeff Hostetler hit a streaking Derek Fenner for another score as the Raiders triumphed 26-7. But dominating on Monday night is a 27-year Raider tradition. Ever since number 35, Hewitt Dixon blasted free in Oakland's Monday night opener in 1970, the Raiders have ruled prime time. Ken Stabler stunned New Orleans and the nation with Cliff Branch to overcome a 21-point deficit in 1979. Jim Plunkett's bomb to Morris Bradshaw triggered a 45-point outburst in Pittsburgh as the 1980s began. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football presents one of the NFL's most bitter rivalries, the Pittsburgh Steelers against the defending Super Bowl champion Oakland Raiders, two teams, but between them have won six of the last seven Super Bowls. Ted Watts returned a punt 52 yards to ensure victory in 1981. Defense also shined under the lights. A Rod Martin sack led to this 66-yard fumble return by 93 Greg Townsend against Miami in 1983. Montgomery returned a punt in a 1984 Monday night battle in Detroit with the clearing block by number 30, Stacy Turan. The incomparable Bo Jackson raced 91 yards for this score in Seattle in 1987. Eddie Anderson's brilliant 87-yard interception return against the Jets in 1989 is just one of countless plays that have made the Raiders by far the winningest team in Monday Night Football history.
In the final two games, despite a crushing hit by Mike Morton, and a daring punt return by Tim Brown and number 46, Carl Kidd. And a guided missile to a diving Kenny Shea. Despite a punt block by 57, Rob Holmberg, and the play of young quarterback David Klingler, punter Leo Araguz, and tight end Marcus Hinton, the Raiders narrowly missed their 19th playoff season. In 1997, the Pro Football Hall of Fame enshrines its ninth Raider, great cornerback Mike Haynes, who wore the feared silver and black for seven seasons, including the Raiders' dominating Super Bowl 18 triumph. Haynes joins Raiders center Jim Otto, guard Gene Upshaw, tackle Art Shell. Wide receiver Fred Bolitnikov. Quarterback kicker George Blanda. Linebacker Ted Hendricks. Cornerback Willie Brown and owner coach administrator Al Davis. New head coach Joe Bugle is pledged to add to Raider greatness. Just win, baby. The past Raiders laid a great foundation and laid a great tradition. And now I feel very honored to be a part of that Raider family and Raider tradition. Our one goal and one purpose is to win the Super Bowl. Not to go to the Super Bowl, but to win the Super Bowl. Future battle plans feature new quarterback Jeff George. Just win, baby. This is a long time uh, coming for me. I've, I've wanted this for, for quite some time. Thank Mr. Davis for, uh, for think, making this happen. Um, um, I'm honored to play for him, and, uh, and I'm honored to play for, for Coach Bugle. <laughs> Meet Bu Coach Bugle, and uh, it's, it's been great. So I'm just ready to, um, to tell you one thing, and that's that anyone who's a, a fan of history know history repeats itself, and it's about time for history and the strong tradition of the Oakland Raiders to start repeating itself. Since 1963, when Al Davis first pledged to build the finest organization in sports, the Raiders have totally dominated in terms of consistent victory. The fire that burns brightest in this unique organization remains its will to win. Now, as pro football hurdles toward the next millennium, the Raiders continue to lead with an unwavering blueprint for greatness.